Hey guys, what's going on? This is Wilson Prado coming to you guys from the NYC Networkers Meetup Group in New York. And uh, for today's video, what I wanted to do was actually show you guys um, the configuration of a UC, uh, Cisco UCSE Blade Series. Now, uh, I don't know if, if anyone actually has had the chance to configure one of these guys or mess with uh, one of the other models like the B, uh, the B Series Blades or the C Series Blades, um, but reason I put this video here together was because I noticed there wasn't really much documentation online, uh, even on Cisco's site. There's really not much on... It, it's pretty brief and it's a bit vague, I found. Uh, so I'm hoping to kind of clear that all that up here tonight uh, with this video here. And this is actually a, a complimentary video uh, to the blog posting that I made. So I actually uh, I, I wrote this all out on how to do it, um, but... Of course, I think you know a video is a lot easier to watch um, for anyone who's just looking to quickly go through this. Um, so we'll do that here for tonight. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Will Zambrano. Uh, I've been in IT. Here's my rap sheet. I've been in IT for about eight years now. Uh, I've done consulting, full time teaching, a um, bunch of different certs. And real quick, I just want to show uh, a couple of the three main websites that we or main channels that we have here. Um, if you're finding yourself on YouTube, we do have a YouTube channel. So if you uh, go to uh, youtube.com slash Cisco Networkers 1, um, you'll find our um, page here. And if you click on playlists, what I try to do is organize each video uh, by track or by category. So you can look at that. Uh, we also have a meetup group as well. This is the main hub site, uh, meetup.com slash NYC Networkers. All the upcoming events that are coming up. Uh, for the group as well. And of course the regular, you know, nycnetworkers.com. This is my blog uh, page here. And um, definitely, definitely uh, check it out when you guys have a chance. Uh, also my email information is down here as well. So what are we going to look for over here for tonight? So basically it's going to be a quick video, uh, just the uh, overview of what exactly is this UCS eBlade. Some concepts and terminology. We're going to go over that real quickly because it's going to a couple new terms and theory that you kind of have to wrap your head around before you actually try to configure one of these guys. And finally, I'm going to actually, I can't show you guys out of the box configuration, I can, but what I can show you guys is at least the configuration steps that I take um, to actually configure one of these guys. And surprisingly, it's not that much. Um, I, I think it's, it's kind of like uh, multicast in the sense that there's not many configuration, you know, not many options to press, but you just need to know what's happening in the back end. So what is it exactly is a UCSC blade? Uh, as you guys can see from the pictures down there, it's basically a service module uh, that you slide into one of the uh, ISR routers. Uh, the ones I've done it on is the 2951 routers. Um, and if you've never seen a UCS before, they're basically Cisco's lines of servers, which they call the Unified Computing Systems, AKA servers. Um, really similar to other bunch of other servers like Dell or HP or whatever else is out there right now. Um, but of course, you know, being with the Cisco name, you can uh, integrate it with the UCS manager if you have the blade chassis. Uh, if you guys actually want more information on that, though, you can go to Cisco's website and just type in um, UCSE, uh, UCSE, and you'll get. Uh, you can look at all the data sheets and find out exactly. Um, actually, I'll bring it up right now. Uh, check out the different models they have, which isn't that too many. Uh, this is actually meant for the branch office. So here you go, you can compare models here. Uh, as you can see, there's not too much to it. Pretty, I mean, pretty standard uh, server, processor, memory, RAID, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you can go to Cisco website to get the full details, or if you guys uh, go over to the, if you guys go over to the YouTube channel, go down to uh, Data Center, and uh, actually, one of these videos here, I believe it's, it's the one with the small resolution, which I was trying to get to come out to the 1080p and didn't come out properly. But in here, I actually, I go through the, uh, the different uh, flavors of uh, UCS servers. So as I was mentioning before, this is a service module that basically slides into your ISR router. Uh, great for your remote offices because now we can run servers inside of a router. So instead of having two separate pieces of equipment, we could run it all in one box. Um, and this comes in two, uh, two main flavors. We have the single width blade, which you can see on the left over here. It, it's 
takes up half of the uh, chassis space, or we have the double width blade. And if you guys look at the model numbers, um, for, like for example, this could be like a 140P. I mean, I'm sorry, 140S, or you can get a 140D. Uh, D is for the double, meaning that it's a full width. It'll take up the whole entire um, slot in the ISR router. Or you can get yourself the half width blade, which if, of course, the bigger the better, more memory, you can put more hard drives in it, um, and all that good stuff. Now, also optionally, you can get um, a little expansion, uh, a four port, either four port uh, RJ45 or fiber uh, card on this, uh, and this only, as far as I, as far as I know, this only comes on the double width blade. Um, it actually will take up one of your hard drive slots here, and it's not pictured here, but basically just pretend this isn't here on, on this on this diagram here, and um, you'll get yourself an extra four ports uh, on the blade, and. Unfortunately, that's something that you can't do on your own. You have to actually pre-order that from the factory because I think they, I think they solder it in or whatever they do with it. But all over the Cisco site, they say that you you can't just put it in on your own. So uh, that's something that has to be done on the factory. All right. So COM system some terminology. Um, I thought this picture was nice. <laughs> so the COM system terminology. So one of the big things that and uh, actually three main points and that you should uh, know here is uh, in terms of the keywords. Let's do the keywords first and then I'll jump into the, the theory. So uh, the Integrate Management Controller. Now this is known if you guys have been playing with the Dells, probably like the Drac. If you've been playing with HP, you probably know them as the Integrated Lights Out. This is pretty much, IMC is the Cisco's flavor of um, managing the, uh, the server without actually going into the uh, host. So if you guys from the server world and you know these, uh, these utilities, uh, uh, the SIMC or the IMC, is pretty much the same exact thing. And uh, I'll show you how that looks like in a second. Now this is where kind of these two little pe uh, topics here is where things kind of trickle people a little bit. Um, internal ports and external ports. So if you guys take a look at the data sheet for the models here, and I think it's on, yeah, network interface cards here. So let's say, for example, I wanted to get a uh, DP. DP um, comes with the uh, PCIe card or the uh, four-port um, gate card. So um, does it come to four gate card? No. DP with PCIe card or double. With, okay, so let's let's do this one, the 140D uh, model. So you get two internal and two external gigabit ports. So when when I first saw this for the first time, I saw two internal and two external. Um, I kind of got a little confused here. So this is where um, in my blog post I tried to explain this, but of course uh, I think the video will be a little easier to explain. Um, the internal ports are used to actually talk uh, between the server. So instead of you having physical physical NICs or physical ports um, on the back of the uh, of the service module, it gets served up virtually to the to the OS or to the um, to the guest OS. So. Um, that's one thing, and the external ports is basically our traditional ports that we're so we're, you know we're used to. Um, our gig ports, physical, we can plug an Ethernet cable into it. Um, but the uh, internal ports, uh, we we configure it from the uh, from the UCSE uh, side, and depending if you're using Windows, Linux, uh, VMware, it'll come up, it'll behave differently depending on what kind of OS you have. So. And let me bring up, actually, I'm going to cheat here a little bit. I could try to draw on paint, but I kind of did the work already here. So um, if you guys actually look at Cisco documentation, which I could do this here, the configuration guides. So if you if you browse to the UCSE model page and drill down to the configure and configuration guides, it's pretty brief. Um, you can click on the GUI, for example, and they try their best. Cisco tries their best to um, <laughs> explain to us how to do this, what's the overview, how everything works together here. Um, now, I'm not a big fan of this documentation. Uh, I think it was very vague, and uh, hence one of the reasons why I'm putting this video here together for you guys. Um, so let me bring up my blog page here again. So those two ports, those two internal ports that the documentation and the, the model data sheet is talking about is uh, called port uh, 1 or GE1 and GE2 depending on, on what model of the card you have. Now the PCE, um, if we come, actually I can show this one, this, this one I kind of like a little better. So let's say you had the double width blade, you had the D model, um, 
and here's your uh, ISR router here. Now out of the box, as you can see here on the left, you have your uh, G1 port, and now this is a physical port here, but internally you have your two internal NICs, or two internal ports. Uh, one is a layer 3 port, which you can put an IP address on it, uh, or on the second one, this is uh, your, um, I forget what they called it, management, uh, what they call it again, MGF, I think I have it here somewhere, MGF, yeah, multi-gigabit fabric, yeah, <laughs> but anyway, so the multi-gigabit fabric, I don't know why they called it that, but it's basically a layer 2 port, so if you want to trunk multiple VLANs or different VLANs uh, to your um, guest OS, you can do it through this port. And assuming that you have access accessibility to it from the um, uh, on the router already, um, you don't have to plug in a different cable. You can just go. You can just push it directly uh, to the um, to the guest OS. So that's the biggest two things with this is getting that concept uh, getting that concept down. Because technically, what you can do, and I've done this already in the field, um, you don't have to plug anything into this into uh, the back of these. Uh, into the back of these blades. These, these ports here, uh, what I like to do is uh, plug one in, the, the little, I don't know if you can kind of see it here, but the green port, uh, it has a big M on it when you look at it. Now that's the, uh, I like to hard code that for the management, um, which I'll show you guys in a second how that works, but, uh, and the rest of the ports, I don't even use them, depending on what type of a deployment I'm doing. Uh, and you could actually just, as long, assuming that you have uh, everything going through, you go. Assuming that your router already has all the VLANs and, and subnets configured, uh, you can do it directly through the router. So that's what they call internal because they're kind of ports, but they're not really ports. Um, so that's, that's how that works. Uh, okay, so external ports. All right, so let me just show you this configuration of this guy, how we do this. Uh, first, I'll go over briefly how we do the physical installation. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the initial CLI setup, which when you guys when I show it to you guys, you may be disappointed <laughs> because it's pretty. Um, it's only maybe like I don't know four or five lines of code, and that's pretty much it. Um, and but the bulk of your work is going to be done in the in the GUI in the SimC. Uh, there is a command line that you could do with this as well. Uh, I guess if you're uh, you know your GUI shot, you can uh, manage this through the the CLI. But um, I think it's I mean. Coming from the server background, you know, years and years ago, uh, it, it just seems a lot easier to use the GUI. <laughs> so, um, as much as I love my command line, uh, in this in this case, I, I can't I can't say that. <laughs> All right. So here um, here's a picture of a, a 2900 series router. Now, on the back, uh, you you notice here that I have one. Um, actually, so on the bottom here, this is where my modules will go. Uh, the left here, or, or the right here, depending on when you want to put it. You can put a single uh, a single width blade, or if you have the full width blade, which is this guy on the right over here, it would take up this whole entire slot on the bottom here. So that's all nice and dandy. Now, um, though on the on the back of here, what I like to do is I like to hard code the, the green port, what they call the management or the M or the GE0, depending on what model you have. Um, I hard code that as the management interface so I can get to it uh, through uh, the GUI. So I can get to the GUI from there, but even before the GUI, of course, you slide, you basically power off the router, um, unless you have a thirty-nine. I want to say the thirty-nine hundred series. Um, thirty-nine. Yeah, if you have a thirty-nine hundred series router, you can uh, do this while the router is on. But if you have a twenty-nine hundred series, you have to shut down the router in order to uh, swap these car, um, swap these modules out. So, uh, but once you do that, once you uh, Pull it, uh, and it it's just slides right in. You power the, the router back up, and let me show you how that looks like. All right. So I got a router here. You can see here I have a twenty nine twenty one in my case. I'll do show uh, yeah twenty nine twenty one, and um, <laughs> so right here I got my two. Um, mod or do my two interfaces that will magically appear. Now, if I uh, look at these guys and see exactly what it is, um, I can see. And remember, I said first this guy here. 
this is going to be known as your um, as your layer three interface. And the second one here, the one slash one, uh, that's going to be your layer two. If I want to do, if I want to trunk certain VLANs to the uh, to the blade. Now, the first thing I like to do is dedicate this port as management. Uh, on the switch side, what I'll do is let's say, for example, I don't know, say VLAN ten. Let's say VLAN ten is going to be your management network. Uh, on the other side, I'll do switch port mode access VLAN ten, um, and this way I'll can can ping this from uh, from the switch side. Now, this part here, um, you'll have you'll have like a separate network, maybe let's say uh, for your um, for the management. So. IMC IP address, this is going to be the IP address of the device that I'm going to hit. Uh, Southern mask and a default gateway as a way that, I, that SimC access can get out. Uh, I'll touch on this in a second here, but uh, this is it guys. This, this is all there really is. If you want, you can do uh, uh, ILO, ILMO shared access. Uh, down here, the only difference, I mean, I don't have anything here, but the only difference here that you would do um, is say like switch for a trunk VLAN allowed, I think the command is, and you can trunk a bunch of VLANs. Uh, over this particular port, and that's pretty much it. Now, once you have uh, once you have this information in here, of course, make sure you can ping this guy. So I'm going to do that right now. And it's off the screen, but okay, good. So I can ping it. That's a good thing. So let me go into the GUI. So you see here, I get an untrusted connection. Okay, that's fine. And you get this um, this uh, screen here. So I know the resolution's a little weird because I'm trying to fit the PowerPoint in nicely for the video, but um, let me sign in. And here we go. So this is what it looks like. Uh, like I mentioned, if you guys are used to already, um, you know what what they should look like to begin with, like in terms of like a, a DRAC, ILO, um, very same similar settings here. Uh, you can power off the server, power on, launch your KVM, uh, turn the lights on if you want to see. You know, I guess if you have like a bunch of routers or whatever, and the remote hands doesn't know which one it is, you can flick it on. Uh, inventory, memory. Power supplies, RAID, if you have multiple hard drives in here, which usually you have at least a RAID 1, uh, if not maybe RAID 5, you can configure that there. Um, like I mentioned, a lot of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. But uh, once you have that up and going, um, create the RAID, uh, change the uh, default password, of course. Um, I think by default it's admin to log in and the password's password, all lowercase. Uh, you can get in. And generally, sometimes also I'll go in here and change the BIOS because sometimes the uh, this might be a little messed up over here. So I put maybe the CD CD drive in there first. Um, and I think I, there's already an OS on here. If you click this little keyboard icon up here, it'll launch the um, it'll launch the KVM console, which is a Java application. And this is almost the same I don't say issue, but the same problem when it came to um, uh, the Cisco ASDM, where if you have like a different Java version, everyone always had like a different way of trying to get this thing working. So, if it doesn't open for you for some reason, uh, open you open it using the Java Web Start, and just play with the different Java versions until you finally get it working. Okay, accept, run, run, run. Okay, and here we go. So we have uh, Windows 2012 on here. Um, let me show you. Actually, pull this down more here. So once I mean, I mean, if someone already has a you know an a OS going here, but if you um, click on this tab here, he's used by another browser. Okay, so not maybe because he has it open on his end. But if you if you have exclusive access to this, looks like someone already has a trying to load an image here or something. Pretty self-explanatory here. You can click uh, right here, the add image, 
uh, browse to the ISO file. So whether you're using VMware, Windows, um, you can uh, put that ISO on there. Go back up to, and you can't see the tab here, but uh, you'll go back up here. And then you can do a control delete or something or reboot the server from the SIMC. Uh, and it'll boot up just like a regular PC. Now, if I come down here, you can see here that I have, uh, well, forget the Ethernet here. You don't want to worry about that. But these two guys here. Now, um, this is going to be your... The first one here, this is going to be your uh, layer 3 interface, your 1 slash 0, or slash 0, and this guy here is going to be your uh, 1 slash 1 interface. So if you want to configure these guys um, through here, um, this will be the default gateway, and this is actually a good time I could bring this diagram here. Uh, where's my... You see his blade. Now, this diagram here is pretty good to, to show what that means. So in this example here, I have uh, ESXi host going to the slash zero interface, which is our layer two interface. And in this example, I gave it a dot two address in this subnet. Now, in our case, it's going to be a ten eleven two zero four dot two. So what I if I want to exclusively use the internal NICs, uh, I can go in here and I can actually hard code this to say, you know, put it on, on the 10, 11, 204 network and then put as the default gateway. Uh, where'd it go? The default gateway. Uh, I could put a 10, uh, 10 yada yada dot two. And what I could do even do as a test is, I'm not going to do this now because this is uh, where we're actually working on that right now, but um, you could actually ping out to this device, this interface, uh, and then that's, that's your way to get out. So, it's a little misleading the documentation once again because even though I hard code this guy as a dedicated port, that management port, somehow my OS is still able to get out. Um, I called in to, for, uh, to TAC and they really couldn't give me a good answer because according to this it should be dedicated, but it, it works. At least it works for me when, I, when I've done this for both, um, for both Windows and VMware. So, um, so that's about it with this configuration. Pretty straightforward. Um, and that's all I have for you guys here for this video. So I uh, hope you guys liked it. Um, drop me an email. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, going forward, I'll try to put more of these little mini videos together. Um, I'll maybe write, like, like write a blog post or something and I'll make like a video to go along with it too. Um, just to kind of help. I, I think sometimes videos and demonstrations are better than blogs sometimes. But, but anyway, with that, um, that's it for me. I hope to see you guys at a future meetup. We actually have a couple... A couple of good ones uh, this month here, so hopefully you can make them, make a, make it to them, and uh, I'll see you guys then.